Well, we've got the analyst put back together again, and we're getting a picture, but it's uh, having a little trouble. It's a pretty bad vertical sink, and I think that may be because of the way that uh, that display is flickering. But uh, it's obvious that we've still got a little more work to do to find out what's really going on here. But it, at least uh, it looks like that the photo tube is working. Uh, that had the pin broken off the bottom and had been inserted incorrectly. So apparently the, the wrong connections didn't harm the photo tube. And it is producing a, a picture. So now I've got to take care of that vertical jitter. And also I noticed that the audio uh, tone there should be producing a tone, but is not. So we'll have to work on that a little bit, and maybe some other things as well. So we'll see about that in the next segment. Okay, well, it turns out that this was, it was all adjustments. Uh, the vertical lock control wasn't uh, locking the vertical to the uh, to the AC line, which is what it's supposed to do. So mostly it was adjustments. There are some went down in there, and the vertical lock control actually is over on this side. It's kind of hard to see, but right in there. And those are the ones that fixed most of that problem. Still not real happy with the picture, uh, but I think that I'm going to be uh, okay with it, at least for now, while I work on that sound problem. Maybe that there's something in common there, perhaps a voltage problem or something. Anyway, uh, I think I've fixed most of the synchronization and other issues, and would like a little better focus, but otherwise I think it's uh, the video is pretty good. Now go on to the audio. Well, as you can hear, I uh, fixed the audio problem. This is the uh, switch over here. Turn on some more lights so you can see what I'm doing here. And the problem turned out to be that 6AN8 right there, the triode section of that, which is used as the uh, 4.5 megahertz oscillator, was bad. It's uh, right there. You can see this is the pentode section, which is the audio amplifier, and then this is the and, and modulator. And this is the 4.5 megahertz uh, oscillator. And it was this section, the triode section, completely dead. So that fixed that problem. And I think this thing might be ready to kind of wrap up, although I would like to work a little bit on that focus problem. But I've gotten it focused a little bit better, but I'm going to check and see if there's some adjustments that we might be able to make to make it a little bit better. It actually is looks like it's putting out about between 200 and 250 lines. This is the 250 point and that's kind of hard to see there but just below that so about 250 lines which probably for this TV is about right. I'm doing a kind of final check on the operation and what I discovered was that the video output, you see right there, you see it has a switch to switch the polarity. Well, it was working fine in one position, but not in the other. It turns out the problem was the amplifier had a bad resistor. I'll show you the circuit here. You notice the video switch here picks off a signal from the plate or the cathode of this 12BH7. The video signal comes into the grid 
and it's supposed to be pretty balanced. One and a half K in the cathode and one and a half K in the plate. Notice that there's a ground or an AC ground through this capacitor here. Well, it wasn't. The, uh, the cathode signal was about 10% uh, of the plate signal. The problem was this resistor. It was only reading about uh, 230 ohms. So I've replaced that resistor. And now I'll show you over here on the scope, turn off some of the light to get a little more contrast. There is one position. And then what I'm going to do is flip that video switch. And you'll see it disappears for a second. That's while the capacitors in the uh, scope readjust. And I'll have to readjust the trigger a little bit here. But now you see, you get, uh, there you can see the sync pulse is positive going. And there you can see it's negative going. So I think that's the last thing in this uh, unit. Everything else checked out. So now what I'm going to do is button it up and then move on to something I like to do with a new piece of equipment uh, before I put it away for a while and that is to go through all of the uh, tube sockets and check the voltages and resistances and I'll show you that in the next segment. Finished up the uh, voltage and resistance charts for the 1075 and then before I put it back in the cabinet I checked it to, to make sure that I hadn't upset anything because of course to do that, those charts, I was unplugging tubes and plugging them into adapters and so on. So I wanted to make sure that everything is still working, and it is. So I think this wraps up the 1075, and I may do some waveform checks at some point, but I think for now I'm going to put it back in the cabinet and uh, add it back into my collection. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, and uh, if you are at all interested in old vintage uh, TV repair gear, this will be useful. It's a pretty narrow field, but one that I enjoy, and uh, also allows me to use this equipment to work on old vintage TVs, so it's almost like stepping back into the 50s. Anyway, good luck for now. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.